Hello, my name is Anthony Perry, product specialist here at Flux Pumps USA. Today we're going to be introducing the new Visco Power Pump Line, which is the positive displacement pump that's going to be replacing the F560. Uh, we're going to do a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison of the, both the completed pumps and then we'll break them down and have a look at the individual improvements that were made. So we'll start up here. This is an F560GS5426. The GS indicates that it has a gearbox. The same pump configuration is also available with an S flange, which would be an F560S. And the pump we're comparing it to is the Visco Power F570. The 570 indicates that it has a gearbox. And again, the same pump configuration is available with a bearing flange, which would be an F580. This pump here has a closed mechanical seal, which indicates that it's for sanitary applications. Whereas the way that you would indicate that with the 560 is 560 is for sanitary, 550 would be for industrial. So on the 560, you can see the stainless gearbox. Um, this is not a sealed unit. And on the Visco Power, we do have a sealed gearbox and stainless steel housing as well. The um, connection to the tube is threaded. You need the um, hook wrench that would come with this pump to break this free and then remove the tube. On the Visco Power, we have a tri-clamp connection. So you just unscrew your clamp, flip it open, and then you can slide the tube off. Moving down a little bit further to the discharge port, you can see the diameter of the discharge is necked down and then comes out to a two inch tri-clamp. On the Visco Power, we have a full two inch um, to match the diameter of the tube, and then also standardized on a two inch tri-clamp. Down to the tube itself, here we have the uh, 5426. The 54 is the diameter of the pump tube, 26 is the diameter of the rotor. This is also available in a 5021. For the Visco Power, we standardized on a 53 millimeter tube. And then coming down here, the stator housings are both reverse thread. And you can see um, the suction protection here. This is not an inliner suction protection, um, but it does prevent uh, some different particles from being absorbed or um, allowed to come into the inlet of the pump. And then on the Visco Power, you can see that we have reinforced 360 degrees to support the entire pump tube. So now we'll take a look at the individual gearboxes. Here we have the gearbox for the F560. You can see that the pump shaft threads directly into the gearbox shaft. So the mechanical seal would be installed in the centering disc and then stacked on top and the shaft would th thread directly into the gearbox shaft. And then on the Visco power pump, um, very similarly, the gearbox shaft is threaded. Pump shaft threads directly in after the seal is assembled. But you can see the difference here um, with this extension on the motor connection piece that the seal will sit lower and um, more in the flow path of the fluid, um, which creates a better lubrication for the seal. And very similarly for the bearing flanges of each style of the pump, the um, 560S, the gearbox shaft is threaded, the seal would be installed, and the shaft would thread directly into the gearbox. And then again, the Visco power shaft is threaded. It does have a larger um, thread than the 560, but the seal would be installed, shaft threads directly into the gearbox drive shaft, and with the extension on the motor connection piece, the seal sits um, lower and closer to the discharge of the pump, so it's getting better lubrication from the product as it's flowing. So now we will take a look at the mechanical seal for the F560. You can see here we have the centering disc, the seal spring, the stationary face, and the rotating face. So the centering disc would be 
inserted over top of the gearbox shaft. The seal spring would be installed. And then you can see this notch here. There is a pin which needs to align inside the centering disc. And then the rotating face would be flipped over so that the seal faces mesh together. And before you press down, you need to make sure that that pin is lined up. There we go. So that it keeps the stationary face from rotating. And then you can thread the pump shaft into the gearbox drive shaft. And now we'll take a look at the Visco Power closed mechanical seal. So we have a stationary face that's going to be inserted into the motor connection piece. And then our rotating face, we're going to install the wave spring and we're going to make sure that it sits below the pin, as you can see there. And we have this O-ring here. This is the uh, closed mechanical seal shaft for the Visco power pumps. You can see the alignment notch here, which will align with that pin. And then the shoulder here, uh, which the O-ring is pressed over and it holds the seal in place. So we'll line up the pin, which can be seen here with the notch. Press firmly and the O-ring holds it in place. And now we can thread the pump shaft into the gearbox. So now we'll take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison of each of the seals that we just went over. Over here we have the F560 mechanical seal. Again, the centering disc, spring, the stationary face, and the rotating face. These um, seal faces are both Silcar versus Silcar. And this was available in FKM and FK FFKM. For the Visco Power closed seal, again, we have the wave spring, the rotating face, stationary face, and the motor connection piece. These faces are also Silcar versus Silcar and available in FKM and FFKM. For the F560, these would give you um, 8 bar, roughly 116 PSI. And with the closed seal on the Visco power pump, we have up that to 15 bar, um, roughly 217 PSI. Now we will compare the pump shafts. So out front here, we have the shaft for the F560. Um, this is threaded up here, which goes into the gearbox as we saw previously. This is also a seven millimeter pump shaft, which on the uh, shaft for Visco power, we have upped that to 10 millimeters. Um, you can see the, the difference in the diameter here. And then up top, as we discussed a little bit, uh, the notch for the seal alignment of the stationary face, and then the um, shoulder here, which holds the seal in place, threads directly into the gearbox shaft. And then on the other side, where they connect to the rotor, again on the 560, threads into the rotor, and also on the Visco Power threads into the rotor, um, but it is a much beefier, stronger thread. Now we'll take a look at the different rotor geometries that we have for the Visco Power versus the F560. So first with the 560, here we have a 26 millimeter rotor, which is the diameter of 26 millimeters. And here we have the 21 millimeter rotor. They both um, have uh, a receiver here for the pump shaft. And then moving over to the Visco power, here we have the R52 rotor, which gives you 52 millimeters of displacement per revolution. This will be the equivalent performance of the 26 millimeter rotor for the 560. And then here we have an R33, gives you 33 milliliters of displacement per revolution. This is the equivalent performance of the 21 millimeter rotor. 
And then here we have the R17. This is for low flow. It gives you 17 milliliters of displacement per revolution. And on all three of these, you can see that they are threaded for the pump shaft and they have a shoulder here for the O-ring to be installed. These would pair up with the um, respective uh, stators for the different geometries that we have. And we still have uh, NBR white, which is food grade, PTFE and FKM materials available. And lastly, we'll take a look at the stator housings. Here we have the stator housing for the F560. You can see that it's a little bit thinner design um, with the alignment tabs and this bar across the bottom. And then for the Visco power, we have um, made this much thicker for uh, it's much more robust um, and also reinforced at 360 degrees. And that is a side-by-side -side comparison of the F560 with its replacement uh, Visco power pump. Thank you.